How's it going everyone? We're back with another Blue Protocol video playing the Japanese beta. So I figured I would give you guys my impressions on this class, which is basically the wizard or spellcaster class within the game so far that we have access to. And I've leveled up a little bit now, so I've got a few different skills to try of different elements. And I kind of have my head wrapped around the class, at least to its sort of initial way that it plays and how it functions. So I thought you might, guys might be interested to see, you know, what this class is about and if it's for you when you want to play it. Because I traditionally play, you know, the Sorcerer, the Spellcaster class in most games, as they're generally the ones that can put out a lot of DPS, or at the very least, a lot of AoE damage, which is usually really good in MMOs. So, let's go over sort of the basics. I'll show you some combat stuff on some mobs. And we'll also go in the menus because you will have to, you, you'll kind of have to understand the menus to get to grips with the class. But our basic attack essentially does like a series of beams. There's also like a charged one that we can do in the middle of our combos. While our right click essentially does a charge, which you can see above the crosshair there is a bar that will go down if I do a spell. You can see there it's going down when I do spells. It regenerates because we're out of combat but it will not regenerate passively while we're in combat. So the way to think about it is we have basic attacks. We have a right click, which will recharge what is essentially our mana, our energy, which is that arcing bar above that you can see going down when I spam some spells. So when it comes to our actual skills at the bottom, you can see we have four skills, which for me on mouse and keyboard is Q, E, R, C. And we also have two summon skills, which is one and two. So every class will have access to the summon skills, while uh, only we will have access to our QERC skills that are specific to our spell Weaver class. But the actual ones that I'm using right now are the ones that I've been having the most fun with that I have unlocked. So we have a Fireball, which if you hold down can charge up. We currently have level two, but at higher levels it will charge even more. And it shoots out a Fireball. It doesn't cost too much energy. It's also very fast. You can literally do it back to back like this and I'll show you it on a mob. It's very strong. It also builds up fire element on enemies. You can see there another spellcaster is actually playing. You can see the fire building up here underneath the mob's health bar. You can see them trying out a few different moves. You can see them sort of teleport there as well because every class has a dodge and for us it's kind of like a short range blink which I also really like. It's a little flashy so I do quite like that as well. Uh, but there's other skills that we have too. I'll show you several of the skills but before we do let me actually take you to the character menu because this is where uh, it's all in Japanese. So I'll explain things as best I can. But you can see our basic skills here, our summon skills here. And this is our weapon. I have a level two crafted staff. If you go over to this tab, you can actually see these are all of the things that we'll unlock as we play and level through. And you can see we're currently level seven. So at level eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, we'll unlock each of these new skills. So every level up is like a new skill up until level 12. And then from level 10, we get our ultimate skill, uh, which I'm very excited to get. And then we also have other skills here, which are kind of like passives and perks for our class that would we'll unlock all the way as we level up through uh, to 20. And then you can see after hitting 20 at level 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and so on, we basically unlock upgrades for these skills. So this here is the fireball skill that you saw me using before. You can see the preview for it here, the preview for it, the next G2 upgrade essentially makes it a bit stronger at level 20 maybe i think it makes it charge to another level potentially or just increases the damage and then again it will increase at level 39 uh it will juice even more to the next charge level do more damage but there's also variants so pretty much most of the skills have a system like this where they level up and become stronger but then they also have two different variants that sort of change the way the skill will function so uh b for the fireball as you'll see here will actually make it continue to explode on the mob and that's pretty much the same for most of the skills as you go through you can see that's that's the function so they'll upgrade and then there's an alternate choice that will tailor it to your specific build and the general way that you level up is that you unlock a new skill each level and then you unlock all the other stuff for your class and then juice up those skills but we do have quite a good variety so as you know we have fire which will build up the fire element on mobs we also have lightning moves which will build up the lightning element on mobs I actually found a lot of these lightning ones to be underwhelming, to be honest. And we also have ice skills as well. Uh, the ice skills I'm yet to make my mind up on. The damage wasn't too high, but I did just unlock a really cool new one, which is kind of like an AOE blizzard that does continuous tick damage, which I think will be quite good if you can keep a mob in one spot. 
but it's the fire skills that I've really been enjoying most. I just wanted to jump in here real quick to show you each of the skills I've unlocked so far so you can see them in their glory and their sort of visual effects. Of course, you've already seen the fireball which charges up and I've explained before, very good DPS on that one. But I'll go through each skill in kind of the unlock order that you get them, or at least that we've got them in the beta. The next one we got was an electric skill, which I found quite underwhelming, but visually looks pretty cool. And is quite spammable. This one's very good for building up your combo meter, so you get multiple hits with this. And it can hit through multiple enemies, so maybe it's more of an AoE one. But on a single target, the damage just wasn't there for me so far, but maybe that will change as you level it. The next one's a really cool ice one that does like this AoE shatter around you it kind of flinches or staggers mobs when you hit them with it as well but it is quite short range so you do have to be quite near the enemies which generally we want to be quite far away and when you're in a party uh the mobs are going to be you know hitting the melee guys so you won't get to use that one too much but the next one that we got is a fire one which i've been really enjoying really good for aoe as well uh it also charges up much like the fireball you shoot it out and you do a big aoe explosion the damage is less than on the first fireball skill which is this one but of course, it has that massive AoE, so if you're fighting two or three things at once, uh, you kind of want to use this one over the single target fireball because it's very powerful. But you can see that they do have some good flashy effects, but a couple of the ones we've unlocked later are also pretty flashy. Uh, so let's change our skills and show the later ones. We got this buff, which I'll explain to you guys soon. But we also got another lightning skill, and we also got another ice skill. So the other lightning skill that we've got is quite an interesting one. We essentially fire these slow-moving lightning orbs. They speed up as they go. But these will actually track out at the enemy that you're fighting and explode on impact. And you can actually kind of like stack them a few times as you send them. So you can send quite a few of them. But again, the damage wasn't quite there when I used these. So this hasn't been a skill I've been using too much. But visually, it's a pretty cool one. And then, of course, the Blizzard skill, which I really do like. It uh, it doesn't do tremendous damage, but I love the visuals of it. It's tick damage if the, mob, if the mob's in there fighting someone else. You basically get the whole duration off on an enemy. If I'm being honest, the initial way that the class leveled felt quite underwhelming, and you didn't have a lot of ways to generate your resource. You are very squishy when you get into combat. But at, as you sort of progress and you get past level 5, 6, 7, you start to unlock a few things that make the class make a lot more sense. So, if I engage this mob, I sort of show you what you mean. So now that we're in combat, we're not generating any more energy unless we hold down right click, which makes us stationary. And then even once we've done that to charge our fireball, we're stationary once again. So it doesn't feel too good to cast spells and have to remain stationary, especially when you have to mix in the charging in between. But as you level up, you gain new skills such as this one, which is like a self buff which lets us continuously generate even while we're in battle. And that's really cool because it essentially can let us spam as long as that buff is active, which can really increase our DPS as well. So it's definitely one of those classes where the first at least five levels, which does take a couple hours, felt pretty bad and I felt pretty far behind the, uh, the other melee classes. But once we got going a little bit, it actually did start to shine. So I can show you the, the Blizzard skill here. I'll wait for him to get a bit closer. Visually, I think a lot of the actual things for this class look really cool. And there's some even cooler ones that we get later on down the line. But what I will say is I don't see the damage being there for all the other skills except for the fire ones. And particularly this fireball one, you can see literally chonks the health bar every single time it hits. So maybe I'm not high enough level yet or I just don't have the gear or the weapon and all the different perks and sockets that affect the class. But initially, I feel like the fire spells are the way to go. But I will say I do feel like it's a very stationary spellcasting class. I wish I could be moving while casting. But as you can see, you basically can't. Even as you're aiming the AoEs, you're still stationary. Buffing yourself, you're still stationary. So when I'm playing a caster class, you know, a lot of games are stationary like that. When they have tab targeting and things. But that's just one gripe that I had with the class was that I'm very stationary while I'm casting, which makes you very vulnerable. Unless you have someone in your party or people in the world like this that are kind of distracting the enemy and taking the heat off of you but that's my that's my general impressions overall leveling uh was a little bit rough earlier on and has been getting better and better as we go through earlier on i was doing significantly less damage than the aegis fighter which is basically like the tank that 26 was playing in my party but now that i've got this uh this mana regeneration buff along with some other fire skills 
uh, and AoEs, my damage has definitely been shooting a lot higher than his, which is what I'd like to see, especially if I'm playing a mage, which I expect to be putting out, you know, some of the top DPS uh, that you can. We're, you know, we're ranged, uh, we're kind of squishy, we're like a glass cannon. But that's my impressions, at least for now. It might change as we play more. I am, of course, level 7, which, like I've said in other videos, doesn't sound like a lot, but it takes a good several hours to level up in this. It's definitely not a super fast leveling experience. But if you want to see other class previews, of course, we've had 2-6 on Aegis Fighter. I do want to try out pretty much every class that the beta has to offer. Then let us know down below. But that's sort of the general gist of the way that the Spellweaver works in Blue Protocol from our day one impressions. And if you do enjoy this video, make sure to hit that like button because it really helps support us. It's a great way to show support to the video and to us. It really does help hitting that like button. And the two videos on screen now, we think you'll really enjoy. If you did enjoy this video, of course, you don't have to watch them if you don't want to. But if you did enjoy this one, you should probably check these ones out too. And then tell us what you think after watching in the comments down below.